There we go. There we go. Oh, this this is a nice trout. Okay, we can drag. We're gonna do the same thing. Stick. Is this a flounder? Is this a flounder? It's a beautiful morning. Yo, what's up, y'all? My name is Ray No Roy, and welcome back to my channel, Fishing Trips. And we're back for another vlog, y'all. Check it. Got a special episode for y'all today. In less than 24 hours, the flounder season is shutting down. That's right. Them delicious flatties will be illegal from November 1st to December 15th. But the, the thing about it is, y'all, this year, 2023, we did not get that cold front mid-October. I don't understand. Matter of fact, you know what's crazy? You know what's crazy? You know what's crazy? November, November 1st, guess what the temperature's going to be? 45 degrees! Meanwhile, it's 80 degrees outside and flounders are just chilling. But I don't care. No more excuses, Rennell. You're going to get a nice flounder. Keeper flounder. I'm, matter of fact, I might get a limit today. That's the goal. You know what? That's the goal today. The goal is to catch a limit of flounder, take them home, clean them, and eat them. I'm going to do it for y'all, man. I'm going to do it for y'all. Enjoy the episode, y'all. Let's go! So I'm gonna just go ahead and work these docks, work some structure. Oh my God, look at that, y'all. It's a rainbow, y'all see that? A rainbow! Could it be a double rainbow? I don't know. All right, focus for now. Got a rainbow, got great weather. It's not cold, but the flounder is gonna be here. We're gonna get a lemon on flounder. Now, note to self, I've been on YouTube for about three years. I never caught a lemon of flounder, and I'm saying I'm gonna do it today. Damn right I'm gonna do it today. Let's get it, baby. I'm gonna be the Mike Tyson of flounder catching today. You, yeah. where are these flatties? So flounder like structure, right? When I say structure, like rocks, things that you know are structured around the water. I know they like rocks because they be heavy at Seawood Park, y'all. <laughs> That cold front on November 1st, where it's gonna drop down to the 40s, I guarantee you, Seawood Park is gonna have 50 cars in line, right? 50 cars in line with 100 anglers within those 50 cars. And once they get into the park, those 100 anglers are gonna be fighting over 20 rocks. I saw something jump over here. So yeah, Seawood Park, man. I know it's like a little inside joke about, ooh, there's a dump, there's a dump, there's a dump. Wait, wait, nothing. So I know Seawood Park is like a, there's a dump of can. Must be horse over there. So I keep trying to say Seawood Park is like an inside joke about why so many people always go over there to flounder fish as if it's the only place in Galveston where you can go flounder fishing. But quite honestly, every year, Seawood Park produces flounder. It is what it is. It, it produces flounder. <laughs> Can't deny it. Cannot deny it. I'm not gonna be going to Seawood Park to do that this year because I'm tired of it, man. I'm tired of um, being around a thousand people trying to catch the same fish so no no see what part for me I'm gonna go off the unbeaten path and try to find flounder places where you know there's nobody around the good thing about that is there's nobody around the bad thing about that is is that it might not be nobody around because there's no there's no flounder around but I'm getting it done all right, y'all, let's get to work. You. Yeah. I do remember like the first time I ever went kayak fishing. Um, shout out to MBR Fishing, he took me. And the very first time I went kayak fishing with Mark, 
you know, he let me borrow his kayak and he was showing me like how to work an ultralight rod and how to work the, the shoreline. So sure enough, we reached the bayou, reached the marsh. He's like, okay, just kind of tap it, drag along the bottom. It's like, don't worry about losing it. Cause you know, if you ain't casting where you might lose your bait, you ain't in the right spot. So I'm doing what he's telling me thinking like, first of all, sir, I've never caught a saltwater fish on artificial. Yeah, it's never happened before. But I listened to what Mark said and start tapping and doing this little thing and sure enough, first fish, flounder. I was hooked on kayak fishing ever since. Ooh, why did that feel like a little, that oyster or is that a thump? Hold on. That feels, it feels like pressure. Let's hit the hook, see what happens. Okay, that's a lot of water. Just a lot of water. False alarm. Wait, wait. Is that a false alarm? Nah, baby. You set the hook on something. That's a fish, baby. That's a fish. You mother. I think it might be small trout, sand trout, something. They're not like, they're not like taking the whole thing. They're like biting it. It's kind of swimming with it. There we go. <clears throat> Got you that time, buddy. 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 Yeah. Ah. Oh, speckler. So this is what's out there biting my stuff, huh? <laughs> One second, y'all. <clears throat> All right, y'all, first fish of the day. A little speck of trap, you know what I'm saying? I think that's the thing I keep getting hit on. And now, if that's the case, then, um, I think I got a plan. I want to say if I just do like a steady retrieve, I bet they'll attack it more. We'll see. It's gonna get released on this bad boy. Come on, baby. Keep it moving, son. Keep it moving. You. Nah, y'all don't like that either, huh? All right, so I don't think a steady retrieve is it. Let me go back to my technique like I'm trying to catch flounder. Just let it drop. Wait a second. And just kind of bounce it. We'll see if that makes a difference. Cause I was getting bites like this. Oop, there we go, right there. Right there, here we go. <laughs> it let go, it let go. See, they're just swimming in it. They're not putting it in their mouth all the way. That's what she said. Hold on. There we go, let it drop. Let it drop, let it drop. Great cloud cover right now. Kind of bouncing off the bottom. <clears throat> Got it. Another trout. <sighs> oh no, it's not even a trout. That's a really big sand trout. All right, don't mess up the camera, baby. All right, y'all. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Calm down, buddy. Calm down. There you go. Eh, little sand trout. These are apparently good bull red bait if you cut them up. One of my catch my first bull red out here too. Let's get another one. Oh my God. Y'all about to die. I'm just realizing I don't got my damn PDF on. Oh. Oh, please. All right, note to self for now. When you're getting ready 
the first thing you do before you mess with your cameras is you put on your PDF. You about to have no fishing trips, candlelight visual. Come on, boy, get yourself together. Sorry, y'all. We were talking about how deep this water is. Not even realizing. I forgot my damn PDF. That could have been bad. Now you know the water is at a higher level than normal. It's not bad when you see like big boats like this coming out. But these boats, man, they're something crazy. Like they have um the ability to go on like one foot of water. It's crazy. So we'll see. We'll see. Alright, here we go, here we go. So the water is nice and calm, as you can see, thanks to that boat. Is that or sir? Nope, that's not or sir. That's a dark speckled trout. Hold on, we got a boat coming. Get out the way. Got a boat coming. Let's get out the way. Oh, oh, there we go. There we go. Oh, this this is a nice trout. Okay, this is drag. We're gonna do the same thing. Is this a flounder? Is this a flounder? It's not coming up. Coming up. Not coming up. I know this thing. It's a damn hard head. This bottom. No, 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 no. I'm not bring I'm not bring you up, bro. You don't move. Hard head. There you go, right there, right there, right there. Okay, eat it, eat it, eat it, eat it, eat it, eat it. Ah, trout. This is a nice little trout. Come here. Come here. Okay. Man. Said I was not gonna keep trout, and I want to keep my word to that. Sorry about that, y'all. Yeah. 
All right, y'all. Nice keeper speckled trout. Put it back in the water. That's all. I'm not eating speckled trout. I'm on a damn flounder. Simple as that. I don't think that's too much to ask for, right? Just a flounder. That's all I want. Did I get hit that quick on a drop? We're gonna keep fighting like a fish until it comes up. I don't care. This is like dead weight. This ain't a fish, or this is a flounder. I know this ain't no flounder. I know this ain't no flounder. I know this ain't no flounder. It's a flounder, come on. Okay, relax. Oh, it's a keeper. It's a flounder, it's on a drop. It's a flounder, it's on a drop. No, no, no. Get another one. Ooh. Oh, whoa, 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 what are you playing on that? What is that? Uh, boy, oh, okay, this gotta be red. Oh, that's definitely red. Uh, okay, baby, come here. Wait, is that a trout? Bro, I know they ain't no damn trout. I know they ain't no damn trout. Can't be no trout, right? Ooh, I can't tell what it is. Oh my god. But it's mad. Let's get a little more drag loose. Don't go to the boat, don't go to the boat. Oh, this gotta be a red. This gotta be a red. Going towards that the crab pot. Come here. Oh. Oh, oh. Yep, definitely red. Come here. Oh. Come here. My arm is tired from all these thousand gas from earlier. Come here. Come here. Come here. It's like it's a slot. Look like it's a slot. Get on the boat. No, nope, no, nope, get on the boat. Get on the boat, my arm, my arm. Get on the boat, you big bastard. Come here, come here, come here, come here. Get on the boat. Get on the, get on the boat. Get on the boat. Let's go. I think we got a slot red. Let's freaking go, baby. Holy smokes. Mm. Yeah. This is gonna be close. I think it might be a slight red, y'all. I think we might have a slight red on our hands. Uh. Uh. Yes, yes. I know. I know, baby. 
I know. I know. Listen, man, I wasn't planning on keeping rest today, but unfortunately, homie, the flounder have been kicking my butt. So you might have to be a sacrifice to the gods if you're 20 inches. You might have to be a sacrifice to the god if you're 20 inches. <laughs> Let's go, baby. That's what I'm talking about, man. We out here grinding, baby. We out here grinding with this bad boy. Oh yeah, this is definitely a slot. This is definitely a slot, y'all. Beautiful, beautiful. Oh man. Let's make sure. Get a measurement on them. Okay. 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 I will eat redfish. Redfish is delicious, okay? Oh, there go. Relax. Okay. Homeboy, you look like you 20 inches. I gotta eat you, I'm sorry. We gotta do a catch and cook. The people wanna see it. Woo hoo hoo. 20, two and a half inches. 22 and a half inches, baby. Let's MF go, baby. Yes! All right, y'all, so I'm back at home and back in my kitchen. I hope you enjoyed the first segment of the episode, the catch. Welcome to the second segment, the clean and cook. Now, y'all, I was out there for eight hours paddling around the marsh for miles upon miles to catch the flounder. I didn't get it done, but I'm not going to complain about keeping that keeper red. I'm excited about that. We're going to make some fish sandwiches, right? Some bomb fish sandwiches. Now, at the time of this video, the date is October 28th. Flounder season is going to be over in about three more days. And guess what? October 31st, right? On October 31st, the temperature is going to drop down to 45 degrees. But guess who got to work? Yep, that's me. I'm going to miss it. I'm going to miss it. 45 degrees, October 31st. And I bet the flounder is going to come. Everybody's going to be posting on YouTube. I got a flounder. I got a flounder. Meanwhile, I'm just at work mad. It's all right, though. It's all right, though. I digress. You know what? I might have to try to go before work. No, right now, don't get fired. Don't get fired over YouTube. Mm -mm, go to work. Go to work. No, I can call in sick. <laughs> <clears throat> hello, hello, hello. I don't feel so good. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll talk about that later. All right, y'all. So, yeah, I'm going to do some fish sandwiches. I'm going to do some homemade french fries because I'm bougie. I think y'all going to like the recipe. Check out the ingredients. All right, y'all. So, here is what I'll be working with. We got some buttermilk, some fish fry bladder, some panko bread crumbs, some butterhead lettuce, some culture dill pickles. Check this out, man. If y'all sleeping on this, this is Sara Lee sweet Hawaiian buns. Y'all know those um, sweet rolls at Thanksgiving? The Hawaiian sweet buns, they got actual this for a hamburger bunch. I gotta check that out. Some lemon, some rustic potatoes, a tomato, butter, brown eggs, and last but not least, the star of the show. The 22 inch redfish. Something else I did with this redfish I'd never tried before. I bled it out out there in the marsh, so we'll see if it makes a difference. I got my deep fry here. This is the chef style deep fry. I got this at HCB, I believe. Got the temperature about 375, so it's ready to go. So yeah, y'all, um, this is it. This is it. I think we're gonna make some bomb fish sandwiches with this simple recipe. All this should be done in like 30 minutes. Although it might take me an hour to flay that. We'll come to that next. You. Yeah. All right, y'all, so let's go ahead and flay our fish. Full disclaimer, if you happen to click this video to learn how to flay a fish, this is not the video for you. This is not the channel for you, okay? I am not great at filleting, but I get the job done. So first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna just sharpen up our filet knife a few times here. The filet knife I use is the Ugly stick fillet knife. Yes, ugly stick. The same people who make rods. I got this at um, Academy, I believe, for like $19.99 at the time. With inflation, this thing is probably $50 right now. But I love this fillet knife. So just pull a few times on here. This is a Smith, um, Smith little fillet knife sharpener or knife sharpener. Put that to the side. All right, here we go. Now, last time I did this, I used my electric fillet knife because, you know, Reds can be kind of hard to flay, just kind of. But this time I'm just gonna use all the fillet knife <laughs> and see how this goes. So no electric knife, man. So we're gonna do a cut towards the fins here. I can never remember, do I go this way or do I go this way? <clears throat> we're gonna go towards the head. See, this is why I use a, a fillet knife, electric fillet knife, so much easier. There we go, so we're just gonna go behind the gills. So yeah, I'm curious to see 
if I'm bleeding it out, it's kind of freaking me out because this thing bled like a pig. It makes a difference. Okay, so go towards the head right now. They have some huge scales, so I gotta get past that. There we go. All right. So from the head down to the stomach here, right? Next, I'm gonna turn this bad boy over here. Something I'm learning is that this parchment paper, it keeps it from like sliding everywhere. I like that. Here we go. So from here, I'm just gonna go on the top of the fish. Just work my way along the top of the spine. Redfish, redfish, redfish. These, once again, are the best fighting fish in the marsh. Damn, say the Gulf, with the exception of jacks. There we go. All right, so we got that cut there. And what I'm gonna try doing is pulling my thumb here, start scraping the spine, and try to salvage some of this meat that I just lost, trying to cut it open. As so. So yeah, y'all, how's y'all, how y'all doing with this, this warm front, as I want to call it? Have y'all been catching flounder? Because I definitely have not. You've probably seen a lot of other local YouTubers talking about how bad the fishing has been around this time which is unusual because normally when fall hit, it's when it kind of turns fire. This year, no bueno. There we go. But yeah, there's a cold front coming on Monday. I don't know when y'all watching this, it might be too late, but if you go fishing on Halloween, they're coming, I'm telling you. All right, so it's going along the spine. Go by the rib bone here. Wash your fingers right now. You need those. Can't make no YouTube video about our fingers. I mean, I could, but I, I just don't want to. All right, so I'm going to go the rib bone here. Once again, if y'all took this video to learn how to fillet a fish, you on the wrong video. Back up slowly. There we go. Yeah. 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 But once again, y'all, cooking is subjective. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't have to be perfect. Now, some of y'all are probably laughing at this filet job. But guess what? I guarantee you, my money shot of this fish sandwich is going to be bomb. There we go. Boom. Put this to the side. Going to be bomb diggity. Turn off a board. I like visuals to be all pretty. You know what I'm saying? I like like my stuff to be pretty. Now you're probably wondering as well, if you're first watching this video, why are you wearing gloves? First of all, this is my house. I do whatever I want in my damn house. Second of all, I got all, all these cameras running around. I got lights. I got to run around, get this shot, get this shot. So yeah, I like to flay my fish with gloves on so when I can take them off, my hands ain't all slimy. All right, so that is our first filet. Just gonna skin it now. Excuse me, brother, I need to sneeze the... I, I know, I'm sorry, hold on. I feel kind of bad having a fish watch me Lay its skin. All right. Now, oh yeah, that's what I want to check out. You know what? I'm seeing a difference, honestly, in the meat so far. Normally, you can see more blood. So I think bleeding out your fish actually does make a difference. So I'm going underneath the skin. As so. Yeah, the way I let the fish out, I didn't show it on film because, you know, YouTube is sensitive. Is I just kind of went between the gills right here, kind of went up here, right? And just kind of like cut upwards. And <laughs> when I cut the throat of it, I had it on this side of the kayak and I just kind of wanted to kind of flip it over where the more water was at because I was on the grass line. Flipped that over, blood was everywhere. It looked like a murder scene. All right, so we got that. Put that to the side. Look like a murder scene. So yeah, um, only reason I bled my fish because I never did it before. Shout out to my boy MDLR Fishing. MDLR Fishing, check out his channel. I'd be seeing him doing it in his video, like cutting the neck. I'm like, why is, why is he doing that? that? That man has issues, you know what I'm saying? He needs to see a therapist about his anger issues because he's always slitting the throats of fish. He can't wait to get home. So I decided to try it myself. And lo and behold, but yeah, I can definitely see the difference in the meat. 
So my bad, Mark and BLR Fishing for calling you psycho. It does make sense why you cut the throat of your fist because bleeding out fist definitely makes a difference. It's not as bloody. I guess I'll be doing that from now on. I'm a psycho with you. Oh man, I forgot. We got to base the damn fish. Okay, so I don't want to forget that. First thing we're going to do is, just to the side, one egg, like so. You can use a brown egg if you fancy. Some buttermilk, as so. Um, I've never tried buttermilk before. I'm just experimenting. I saw it online where apparently maybe it makes a thicker batter for buttermilk. So we're just gonna experiment, okay? Once again, fishing does not have to be perfect. Or cooking doesn't have to be perfect. Fishing don't gotta be perfect either. As long as you get the job done. It'll take you eight hours to catch one fish. As long as you get the job done, get the job done. So, wow, that's interesting texture. So I'm, ugh, come on, it's like pudding. All right, so this is the buttermilk and egg. No, nope. I never, I've never done this before. Normally I just do egg for my base. But we're gonna try something different. Okay, that texture is freaking me out. What is the expiration date on this? November 7th. Mm -hmm. It's still good. All right, I guess it's supposed to look like that. All right, so that is our base, right? We're gonna put our redfish. Ooh, before I put my redfish in the base, I almost forgot. One second, y'all. One second. Put a little seasoning, a little seasoning. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna do some little slap yo mama seasoning on the redfish before. You know I'm saying we put seasoning in this house. I don't know where y'all from. Mm -mm. We season our food here in Texas. You know what I'm saying? We season our food. Ain't no unseasoned chicken in this house, baby. So we'll slap your mama seasoning, okay? After that, we'll put it in our buttermilk base like that. All right. Put this here. There we go. So we'll just kind of flip that around. Just get it nice and buttery. I must be really hungry because this buttermilk egg mixture smells delicious, okay? Put that to the side. Next, I got some Xanarain's fish fry corn batter. You can also just use this like regular flour, okay? Just put that here. Just a little bit, I'm only doing two fillets. It does not have to be a lot. Just enough to coat the bottom of my tray. Okay, put that to the side. Next, we're gonna use some panko, okay? Panko bread covering. This stuff right here is bomb. It gives you a nice crisp fish, crispy fish every time. It's just bread crumbs. Just enough to coat the bottom, bet. Okay, so all we have to do is a simple a similar line, right? So the similar line goes from, we basted our fish, right? And the seasoning, buttermilk, and flour mixture. <laughs> Next, we drop it in a flour mixture. Let's get that nice and coated right there, all right? Just like so. Yeah, I need some more flour. And the cornmeal. After that, you put it in the pan coat. Kind of press down so you can apply pressure. Throw it on top like that. And flip it around, throw it on top. And that's it. That That is gonna be delicious. It already smells good, that's crazy. So once again, after you dish your egg and buttermilk mixture, make sure you season your fish. Okay, oh, is that a pin bone? No, no, I'm about to kill me. About to kill me right now. Hold on, y'all. I feel, oh my God, there's a pin bone in this. Give me a second. Could y'all imagine I would have bit that and died? So let me take this off. Okay. Double check for pin bones in your fish, especially if you're cooking for other people. You don't want to kill them. I don't even know lawsuits. I don't even know lawsuits. Right there. All right. Like I said, once again, fi fishing and cooking does not have to be perfect. It's an adjustment, right? When you fish, sometimes it doesn't work. You try a different lure, you try a different technique. Cooking is the same way. You just kind of adjust and do what you gotta do along the way. All right, pin bones are out. Pin bones are out. <laughs> Put it in our flour mixture here. Fish fry mixture, cover it, coat it. There you go. 
panko, breadcrumbs, cover it, press, and that's it. That's it. So we have our two fillets. I'm gonna cook these in a deep fryer just for about three to five minutes. When you have a deep fryer, y'all, everything cooks twice as fast, so be careful with that. Love a deep fryer, love it, okay? Five minutes will be done. Um, let me cut up some potatoes so I can get my fries. We're almost done. You. All right, next up, real quick and simple, man. If you never made homemade French fries, you're missing out. All you need is a big old potato, right? Whatever your favorite potato is, Idaho potato, rustic potato, whatever. Take your potato, right? Watch your fingers, all right? Watch your fingers. What we're gonna do is just slice it in half, like so, right? This is a big potato, so you gotta be careful. All right, after you slice it in half like that, boom, okay? Next, what you wanna do, wash your fingers. Cut away from your fingers at all times. Slice it like a real big old potato chip, right? Just like that. It looks like a real big potato chip, okay? You continue to slice it as so. Once you slice it, you just do long cuts, right? Long cuts, long cuts. And just like that, y'all, you have homemade french fries. Simple. Once again, we season our food in this house. So we're gonna do a little Cajun fries with some Slap your Mama seasoning on the fries, okay? So just repeat the process that I just showed you. Um, it's gonna do about three potatoes. And that's it, y'all. That is what you call a homemade french fry. Gonna be delish. All right, y'all, so I got my fish in my basket. What we're gonna do is just slowly drop your fish in the fryer, just like that. It's gonna be 375 degrees. Just put that on there and done. Boom. We'll just cook this for about five minutes. It's gonna go quick. So you gotta wash your fish. Be careful with these deep fryers, man. They cook everything like three times as fast. Popping. All right, so just under medium heat, get your stove set, get a stick of butter, wrap it around. Face down, I do my tortillas, my flour tortillas the same way. Kind of slowly go clockwise. Let it sit for a second. Just want to get a nice little crust, golden crust to it, like that. Then flip it around again. Make sure you twist it to get that butter. You got to get your fingertips kind of burnt. That's how you know it's good. All right, get that out, nice and golden. Once again. A little butter, sit around clockwise, let it sit for a second, twist, twist, flip around, make sure you get that butter, twist, twist, it's not rocket science y'all, this is simple, but it makes a big difference, big difference, do that, boom, and that's it man, that's all you have to do to do your buns. We're almost done, people. We're almost done. enjoyed that money shot look delicious doesn't it i just hope it tastes as good as it looks because this is my favorite part of the episode the taste test that is that nice fish sandwich red fish sandwich all right here we go eight hours 10 miles propelling a round trip lost my legs during this trip see if it's worth it mm. oh yeah Mmm, it's crispy, it's flaky, got the toasted bun. Mm. Oh, it was worth it. Eight hours, 10 miles, it was worth it. Mm. Let's try one of these little homemade french fries. Oh yeah, that's it. 
Yes, Lord. Mm. Yeah. Mm. You know, I'm not going to take one bite, but hold on, hold on, hold on. Mm. Oh, yeah. Mm. Second bite is even better. Oh, my God. All right. I'm about to throw down. Before you go, though, make sure you thumbs up the video if you liked it. Make sure you subscribe. Join my fishing family. Or you can watch my videos of me talking with my food in my mouth. Delicious, man. Did I mention this was delicious? Once again, my name is Brandon Ward, a.k.a. Fish and Trips. It's been real, y'all. We're going to drop the whisk today. Peace.